Ukraine is stuck. Its summer offensive has failed to reach its goals and hopes of a decisive breakthrough leading to a quick victory are now all but lost. For Kiev and its backers, those words will be hard to hear, but they come from none other than the Commander-in-Chief, Valery Zhaluzhny. Western Kit has leveled the playing field between Ukraine's small army and Putin's much larger forces, but it has not been decisive. What is needed now, Zhaluzhny believes, is a technological breakthrough that will tip the scales back in Kiev's favor. According to the general, drone swarms, plasma tunneling robots, advanced missile technology, and more will be crucial to getting Ukraine's advance moving again. He also warns that failure would mean Vladimir Putin rebuilding his armies for another all-out attack, which Ukraine may not survive. That would bring Russia to NATO's doorstep and tee up a direct confrontation with the US that many have dubbed World War III. This is how Ukraine can break the deadlock that has thwarted its summer offensive and why, despite appearances, victory remains within its grasp. The problem identified by Zhaluzhny, in a nutshell, is this. Both Ukraine and Russia are fighting a 21st century war with 20th century weapons and tactics. Artillery guns and rockets to soften the enemy's defensive, tanks to break the front line, and armored vehicles to rush troops through the gap and into the rear where they can cause havoc. That is how war has been fought almost since Hitler's first blitzkrieg and in fairness to Kiev and its Western allies, those tactics have worked against Russia before. That was during the Kharkiv offensive this time last year, when Putin's army was forced into a chaotic retreat that returned thousands of square kilometers of territory to Ukraine's control in just a few days. The problem is, you don't get to surprise your enemy twice using the same game plan. After Kharkiv, Russia identified its weaknesses and moved fast to close the gaps. Last winter, as the West dithered getting Ukraine the armor it needed to repeat that tactic at scale, Russia was busy digging trenches, laying minefields, and burying tank traps. It also invested heavily in spy drones and precision weapons such as Lancet loitering munitions, glide bombs, and guided artillery shells. That meant when Ukraine launched its long-awaited summer offensive this year, it quickly ran into multiple problems spelled out by Zhaluzhny in a recent essay in The Economist. First and foremost, it lacked air power. Item number one on the agenda in both Russian and NATO manuals before carrying out an assault is to clear the skies of enemy aircraft so your troops can advance without being hit from above. Russia is afraid to lose its precious jets and pilots in combat so they don't come anywhere near the front. But what happened instead is the Kremlin deployed thousands of cheap drones to hit Ukraine's forces. That meant it was impossible for Ukraine to mass its forces for an attack. NATO doctrine teaches that force needs to be concentrated against the enemy to achieve a breakthrough. And American officials have rowed with their Ukrainian counterparts about their failure to do that over the summer. But the problem is that on a battlefield saturated with spy drones backed by precision shells and rockets, both sides can see any concentration of forces a mile off and have the ability to easily destroy everything they can see. Russia overcomes this with sheer numbers, throwing men and machines into brutal attacks until the defenders have nothing left to shoot with and are forced backwards. But Ukraine, which has limited numbers of both troops and vehicles, cannot afford such losses and so breaks up its large armored brigades into small squads or platoons. This means they are harder to spot and less likely to be destroyed, but lose a lot of their combined combat power, which makes them so effective. Third, Ukraine lacked mine clearing equipment and what equipment it did get was insufficient for the task. In some places, the Russians have laid minefields 30 kilometers deep and stacked mines three on top of each other making them extremely difficult to clear. Even if Ukraine's troops managed to create a path through, Russia was able to see what they were doing with its drones and use special artillery shells to rain mines from the sky and quickly repair the hole. Again, 
That meant Ukraine having to break up its forces so they would be harder to spot, in many cases sending squads to clear the mines by hand, slowing the pace of its attack to a crawl. Lastly, Russia became a lot better at using electronic warfare to block Ukraine's own precision weapons, negating a lot of the early advantages that Kiev got from weapons like Excalibur guided artillery shells and HIMARS. When they first arrived on the battlefield last year, these weapons were a game changer, stopping Russia's advance across the Donbass dead and allowing it to be reversed in some places. But Zhaluzhny admits they are much less effective now, a fact that helps explain why, even as longer range ATACMS missiles arrive in Ukraine, they have not been a game changer. Ditto F-16s, which are expected to start arriving from early next year. No doubt they will help, but clearing the skies of thousands of drones will require more than a few dozen jets. Instead, Zhaluzhny proposes a myriad of solutions that range from the mundane to the extraordinary. First, the long war that Kiev and its backers had sought to avoid now looks to be setting in, and Zhaluzhny warns they need to be ready for it. That means bulking up existing weapons factories so that Ukraine not only has the missiles and shells it needs to fight on any given day, but can build up its stockpiles. It means increasing the amount of training facilities within Ukraine and closing loopholes in draft laws so more people can be funneled into the military reserves. And it means investing in brand new arms foundries so that modern weapons like tanks, precision shells and rockets can be created within Ukraine itself instead of being brought in from outside. But it also means developing entirely new kinds of weapons and technologies. Just as the leap from cavalry to tanks was able to break the stalemate in the First World War, Zhaluzhny believes another modern-day leap could swing the war back in Ukraine's favor. In the air, he argues that Ukraine needs not just the lone suicide drones it is currently using, but swarms of them to overwhelm Russian air defenses. Powered by artificial intelligence, tens of thousands of cheap craft, including decoys, could be deployed simultaneously from anywhere on the battlefield, making them virtually unstoppable. Such swarms have been theorized by drone experts as the pinnacle of this kind of warfare, but until now, have only existed on paper. To clear minefields, Zhaluzhny wants lasers to map out exactly where the mines are and then decommission jet engines and water cannons to sweep away the explosives on the surface. To destroy those buried underground, he suggests using machines like the Fast Burrowing Robot, an American experiment that uses plasma torches to rapidly bore holes. Advanced electronic warfare equipment, such as anti-drone guns, must be widely deployed to stop Russia from launching its own swarms, he argues. While net-carrying drones, also powered by AI, should be tasked with hunting down and ensnaring enemy craft instead of relying on expensive missiles or jets. And portable equipment to blind Russian radar and confuse its infrared sensors should also be developed, he says, to hide troops and tanks from spy cameras and satellites. Some of those ideas seem far-fetched, and Zhaluzhny may well be spitballing. After all, why discuss your plans in a magazine where the enemy can easily read them? But there can be little question that Ukraine's plan to regain all of its territory has stumbled, and a game changer will be needed if it is to regain momentum. With the help of the West, the country is better placed than Russia to win the technological race and achieve the kind of breakthrough Zhaluzhny is talking about. Already, Kiev and its weapon makers are experimenting with things like AI-powered gun turrets to identify and take out Russian troops. And experimental AI-powered drone catchers are already in use in Kiev. Meanwhile, Western arms companies such as Saab are developing camouflage sheets that deceive not just the human eye, but robotic sensors as well. Russia, by comparison, is struggling to get hold of components needed just to keep its 20th century weapons in the fight. Semiconductors plundered from kitchen gadgets like fridges and washing machines have already turned up in missiles, according to some analysts. 
and it has rolled some ancient tanks out of storage as its current fleet is blown up too fast to be easily replaced. Which surely places Putin at a disadvantage in the race to create new weapons. That advantage may not last forever, particularly if China steps up its efforts to supply technology through back channels. But for now, Kiev holds the edge. Its Western backers have already spent billions equipping the country to fight yesterday's wars, and that has leveled the playing field between its small army and Putin's much larger force. But winning the war may now rely on equipping it to fight the war of today instead. Failure to do so, Shaluzhny warns, will mean combat devolving into trench warfare of the kind seen in Europe more than 100 years ago, which will play directly into Putin's hands. Russia will be able to slowly degrade Ukraine's arms forces while rebuilding its own before launching another all-out invasion that the country may not survive. Victory would bring Russia to NATO's borders in Poland and Romania and may inspire Putin to continue his project of rebuilding the Russian Empire by invading the likes of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. That would very likely drag America directly into the fighting in a scenario seen by many as the start of a third world war. Whether the future really belongs to drone swarms and plasma robots remains to be seen. But so long as Kiev can win the technological race, then victory remains within its reach. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this.